Thank you for choosing a transportable Shade Sheds product. We'd now like to support your choice by helping you with the installation. This video takes you step by step through the installation process and will give you a clear overview of how easy it is to erect the product yourself. Our transportable Shade Sheds are so easy to assemble. Less than three hours to erect a Shade Shed. And you require no trade skills. Just a hammer, a ladder and a screw gun. So, let's get started. This is our wind rated peg. If you're putting up your shed for a temporary application, you only need four of these per shed. If your shed is for a permanent application, you'll need four aside, that is eight pegs per shed. This part of the peg is called the saddle. It will go over the top of our base rail to hold the shed down. This is our cement footing bracket. To insert these, a hole is dug in the ground, 400 millimeters diameter and 600 millimeters deep, filled with cement. The bracket then sits over our base rail and pushes into the cement. Council regulations require four of these brackets per shed, that is, two aside. This is our W10 pack, or what we class as our 6x6 metre double shade shed pack. This pack contains all the framing needed to construct your shed, and is what will turn up at your site. We'll open the pack and pull out the base rail, which is the rail that runs along the ground. Shed construction starts at the base rail and gives us a position to work from. So our first step will be to put the base rail together. This is our patented swage end, which fits perfectly into the tubing. So construction of the rail is simply a matter of pushing the pieces together and screwing the rail together with two tech screws at the joints. Before placing the screws, ensure that each swage and piece is perfectly in line, so there are no kinks in the tube. You can do this by placing the rail on its side and checking that it's nice and straight. Then simply flip it back upright and screw it together. Follow this procedure to construct the other base rail. Now we peg one base rail into position. Firstly, lay a small bed of gravel where you will be situating the rail. This will stop any moisture from forming under the galvanizing. Place the base rail on the gravel and lay the pegs beside it where they'll need to be positioned, that is in the center of each section. Remove the saddles from the pegs so they're ready to place over the base rail like this. Tap the pegs in with a sledgehammer until they're lodged firmly in the ground like this. Next, we position the base rail over the bolts, place the saddles on the bolts and screw them down. Tighten them with a spanner. To set the distance between one base rail and the other, we use the portal frame. Construct the portal frame by slipping the pieces of the frame together. Next, measure across the top of the frame and across the bottom to make sure they're the same width apart. Make sure that the edge along the top of the frame is straight by checking all the swages are straight. Now we tech screw it up on one side with two tech screws offset on the swage. We then spin the frame over and do the same on the other side. Use the first frame as a template for the others by constructing each consecutive frame on top of the preceding one. Screw them together in exactly the same way as the one below. Now we're going to put two portal frames on the base rail so we can square up the two base rails. Place one at the back and one at the front. To make sure the shed is square, we measure the width of the shed starting with the opening. We measure from the outside of the top of the frame to the outside of the frame on the other side. This will give you your base rail width. Next, place the tape on the outside of the base rail. Measure across exactly the same measurement. This will mark the position of the other rail. Check the back of the shed in the same way and position your base rail accordingly. 
take the measurements diagonally across your shed. Then reverse that procedure by measuring from the other direction. The two measurements need to be the same. If the measurements are different, simply alter the position of the base rail until the measurements are correct. It is a good idea to recheck all measurements to make sure they are exact. Once the base rail is placed in the correct position, situate the pegs on the inside of the rail in between each frame. Move the base rail side and pour the gravel along where the rail is to go, as you did for the other side. Then place the pegs in position, removing the saddle and hammering the peg until it is firmly in the ground. Again, place the saddle over the base rail onto the pegs and secure it as before. Because this shed is constructed on a sloping block, we will need to make sure we get it sitting level. To do this, we use risers. This is a riser kit, which consists of a set of 400 mm risers. To do this, you should use a string line tying the string at the bottom of the swage on the high side and then running it across to the other side. Using a small string level, lift the string up or down till it is in the right position. Measure up the side from the base to the string line to find out how much rise you'll need to create a level shed. In this case, it's 200 millimeters, which means we have to cut the riser down from 400 to 200 millimeters. Whatever your measurement is, just cut the riser to size. Once this is done, simply place the risers along this edge so you'll have a nice straight edge to work on. Then place all your portal frames in position. The next step is to run a string line across the top of the frame to make sure all the portal frames are level. If a portal frame is down, Tap it up from underneath until all frames on one side are level. Screw the first frame at the base and then move along, putting two screws in each side of the post. Use a level to make sure they're nice and straight. Next, we'll place the roofing tin in position. On your tin sheet, you'll notice this overlap edge. Place it up against the side of the shed and mark where the screws are going to go into the portal frames. It is important that this is done correctly. In this case, we will come in 150 millimeters from the edge of the tin to the first portal frame, and so I mark the tin appropriately. Next, check the other end. In this case, I need to come in 170 millimeters from the outside of the frame, so I will mark the tin there. Then we mark the tin at the centre of each portal frame. Take the first sheet and then bring the other sheet over to it. Remembering the two overlaps have got to go together. This goes over that. We do this so each sheet will slip together easily and to prevent any leakage later. So it's important that two overlaps and underlaps go together you will have a sharp edge on the outside on both sides. Now we screw the two sheets together using the pencil marks that we've made. The next step is to place the sheets on the roof. Place your ladder inside the frame to the middle. Lift the two sheets up by sliding them up the frame to the center of the roof. Now the sheets are in position the next thing is to screw them in. We start at the front. We've already marked the top of the sheet where the beam should be. We know we have to come in, in my case, 150 millimeters to line the tin up. Next, we need to make sure the outer edge of the tin lines up with this cut on the nose of the shed. If there is a difference, simply push that beam across until the cut is level with the tin. Place one screw on the edge of the tin to hold the sheet in place. Then use a pencil to mark where the screw needs to go into the tin. When you fix the pan, you should put the screw in the pan at the high spot of the pan, so this is where you should mark it. Fix all the pans on the outer frame up to the center. 
Next, go to the other end of the shed and repeat the same procedure. Then work into the middle, checking the positioning, marking the screw holes and fixing the tin to the frames at the top of each pan. Now we can screw the rest of the roof up by sliding the sheets on one at a time and screwing them to the frame in the same manner. The easiest way is to have one person screwing up the roof and the other sliding the sheets on one at a time, slipping them under the previous one. When we get to the tin that runs down the side of the shed, we lift the sheet up, secure the two sheets by clamping them together along the outside edge of the shed with a pair of vice grips. We've marked out the center beam on the tin. Now we secure the center of the tin by pushing down firmly and placing a tech screw in the center position. Put one screw on each beam, not through the beam, just through the tin to hold the tin together and mark where the beam is so we can screw it later. Next, we get the flashing on the side. This tucks up under the tin. Now we mark the center of the beam. Go to the middle post and screw in the rollover. The tin must roll over the side at least one pan. This is vital for the strength of the shed. Screw the rollover onto the frame. Repeat this entire process on the other side of the roof. Next job is to place the flashing on the two ends of the shed. The easiest way to do this is snip the side of the flashing with tin snips, about 10 millimeters from the side. Bend each side to a 90 degree angle, creating an envelope at each end. Then bend the top edge over into the center, creating a neat finish. Crimp the edges together with a pair of pliers and you've created your corner flashing. Place the flashing on the shed, starting at one corner. The flashing will sit easily on the edge of the tin. Screw the corner in place from the bottom and then from the side. Place a cut through the flashing at each of the high spots along the tin so that you can easily shape the flashing around the edges. Screw the flashing to the tin at various spots along the tin. Repeat this process with the flashing on the other side. Snip both pieces of flashing at the center, overlap them and screw the edges down. Again, repeat this process with the flashing on the back of the shed. Lastly, remove all the small shavings that were left after tech screwing the roof down using a broom. It's important to get those off because if you don't, you may have trouble with rust where the filings may rust up. Once all that's swept off, the roof will be fine. BHP Colorbond has got a 10-year guarantee. And there you have it. Your transportable shade shed is now ready for use. For information on other transportable shade shed products or for advice, call our marketing department and talk to Lauren, Amanda or Geraldine.